these three look like Leanne. <laughs> okay, somebody could have stopped me some way through that. <laughs> but okay, we'll be ready for Leanne when she comes back. All right, sorry, Stephen Boren. I'm gonna make sure he's here before I go. <laughs> All right, thank you. Stephen is returning to the fire department as a second generation firefighter and has been in the fire service since 2004. Stephen also served two years with the Department of Defense in Afghanistan. Stephen owns a small construction company where he works on his days off. Stephen is married and has eight children, two boys and six girls. In his spare time, Stephen enjoys hunting, fishing, and spending time with his family. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you. Timothy McGee. Okay. Timothy is originally from Gulfport. He graduated from Gulfport High School and earned bachelor's degrees in psychology and Spanish from Mississippi State University. Prior to joining SFD, Timothy was a student worker at MSU. His hobbies include fly fishing, 3D printing, and spending time with his family. And he is a licensed private pilot. You go, guy. So where do you go fly fishing? Uh, I don't go fly fishing. Uh, I go flying. Fly, uh, okay, so fly fishing is wrong? You don't go fly fishing? I do go fishing, but not. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Nav. <laughs> so I'll strike off fly fishing, because I was wondering where around here you would go fly fishing. <laughs> All right, well, welcome, Timothy. We appreciate you being with us. And last but not least, we have Cage Palmer. Cage is from Louisville, Mississippi, and a graduate of Winston Academy. He attended East Mississippi Community College, and while there, he decided to follow his father's footsteps and become a firefighter. Welcome, Cage. We're glad to have you. And that concludes all these folks, so we want to welcome them all to the city of Charlotte. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so last but absolutely not least, I would like to um, note that we have mentioned it on several occasions, but I would like to note that this is Mr. Kemp's, Mr. Kemp Sr.'s last meeting as a director of utilities. And we have had the pleasure um, of having him with us for 11 plus years. And he has done incredibly good work for, for us. And he has been a credit to his department, to his city, to his profession, and we are so much the better for it. So he has asked to say a few words, and so I wanted to at least acknowledge that um, and say thank you yet again, because you're not leaving us. We just approved a contract, but we are, we are delighted and, and sorry that you are be leaving us, but we are pleased to continue to have your services available to us. So. Thank you, Mayor and Vice Mayor and the entire board. And as, as the Mayor said, you know, over 11 years ago, I felt very honored to be hired by him to serve in this position. And this is my last... Uh, I guess board meeting as general manager and I just want to say thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to serve this community and when I look around I see our systems I think are better uh, our culture as it relates to service is evolving and improving and we're in a good spot and the future really does look great and bright and so with all of that you know start with home and so with that I just want to say thank you it's really been a privilege and with your support I think although this is a challenging position uh, and, and demanding uh, your support really made it uh, special and I think it's rewarding and because of that here again just thank you very much for the opportunity so that's what I want to say yeah. Good moment. Um, board comments. Alderman Carver. Um, one, I would say just for public notice, I know if you're a city employee now, you're not required. I know it's in, in the consent agenda, but you're not required to wear a mask. I think that is a step in the right direction. I look pretty much at the daily death rates, and I think the United States of America, a country of 340 million, we had around 130 COVID deaths uh, yesterday. So it's de definitely on a downward trend. Uh, I think that's just a, a good good thing for the country as a whole. Uh, secondly, I've always said, and you go back to March 2020 in, in my previous training, if you want to wear a mask in the car by yourself, uh, you can do that. If you want to wear it anytime, I think it's always and it should have been a choice. So I, I stand by the comments I've said through the whole time um, with my training and what I think. I think it's just, uh, I think it is a choice. So I think if you are a city employee and you, and you choose to continue to wear one every day, you'll have that choice and we'll support you. Um, Secondly, I didn't vote for it, but I think today started the downtown uh, parking meter, so I guess you'll get to get that app downloaded, and I've already had people ask me some questions about it, and maybe somebody on the board that, that spearheaded that could uh, 
could just, for public knowledge, tell us about the downtown area and the areas it pertains to and what you've got to do to have that app and uh, what you've got to do. Third, I, you know, we've, we've done this before, Mr. Kemp. I'll tell you that I respect you um, tremendously. And uh, that's tough to, to see you to do that, to see you go. But, um, you know, the systems are much, much better. I was looking down the board and everybody agreed. And, and we'll hear some good comments tonight. I think part of your, uh, your leadership style is just your, your natural demeanor of your personality. And, and that director's job is not, something that, uh, is not something that's easy for most people to handle. I think you've just got patience naturally. 90% um, of the calls that I've got that I had to direct towards you were somebody's upset about something, just what comes with the nature of the business, and you are a, a person who handles everything, and you were able to diffuse situations. And uh, just so I've always looked up to you. And uh, I wish you the best, and, uh, and your grandparents and duties. I know they'll be tougher than the job you currently currently hold. So, I just I, I appreciate everything you've done. How you? Thank you, Alma Sister. Um, this is the por part of the meeting that is just all over the place. So, I would like to echo what the uh, mayor said about how pleased we are with the youth sports participation at parks. Um, but I would also like to note that we have a pretty robust adult sports program at the park. So if you play softball or kickball or several other things that I don't play but are interested in being part of a league, um, register and, and get involved too. Um, I, I will say as far as the app, I don't, I don't know much about it. I'm gonna defer to the mayor for those comments, but I did dink around in it enough to figure out pretty quickly that it's not hard to use. So go in there with confidence, you can do it. And then I too would, would like to say thank you to, to Mr. Kemp. Um, in, in my time on the board, um, you've, you've been our general manager most of those years and definitely see changes that have happened there at utilities and um, frankly, as, as Alderman Carver said, um, the nature of the calls that we get have changed dramatically, which means you're doing a lot of things right over there. So we appreciate your work. And I know that's a small piece of it. The systems is a bigger, more complicated piece, but that, that customer service piece of it is important to, to, to it touches all of us in, in ways that we didn't anticipate when we thought we might want to be aldermen. So <laughs> thank you. Alderman Rupp. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kemp, I didn't get to work with you that long. I've only been on the board uh, for, for less than a year, but we go back to your days at TVA. And I believe a couple of your daughter's wedding receptions where I played music. And through all of those, especially the receptions, you demonstrated calm leadership. So uh, best of luck to you in the future. Holman Brooks. Uh, yeah, I'd like to say something to Mr. Kim. You, you were the, the first director that, that I met with. Actually, I think I met with Alderman Rutt and we met together. And uh, here it is, six months later, you're gone. I'm just wondering if it's something we did wrong. <laughs> Not we. What do you mean we? Well, you were with you. me. But, but what? You, you've been most responsive. Anytime I've called you with anything, you've been right there. you kept me up to date on what's going on, and it's been a pleasure to work with, and we will certainly miss you. And I, I do appreciate your service. Uh, one thing I, uh, I can say just a little bit about Park Mobile, mm -hmm. since Alderman uh, Carver brought it up, uh, it's not downtown Port. It's from Montgomery Street to uh, University, uh, University Drive, from Montgomery Street to campus and uh, some on Maxwell Street, some on Page, and uh, a little bit on uh, Colonel Boyle Road. One side, it'll be the uh, <coughs> east side of Colonel Boyle Road and then Atkinson Way. And we worked with Park Mobile to get a 15-minute grace period so people that want to go to restaurants, if they you know, want to run in and pick up a go order or, or if it's DoorDash or, or uh, you know, Lazy Guys, you know, they, they won't have to necessarily pay to park. They'll have a 15-minute grace period. Now, the first 15 minutes is free. Uh, and, and there are more than uh, one way to pay. You know, of course, you've got the app, and uh, you got, you can, there's a QR code, and you can text and Google Pay. But, I mean, I'm, I'm certain there will be some, some uh, growing pains and a learning curve for, for people. But, you know, this was at the suggestion of, of many, if not all, of the uh, restaurateurs and the and the uh, uh, merchants, you know, to, to turn the parking over. Uh, so you know, here we are. We'll give it a shot and see. You used it. I have, and I have in fact used it, and it um, it, it worked fine for me. The, the app knows where you are, and, and you can you know park right there in your zone. So I think it'll be fine. Okay. 
Thank you. Alderman Beatty. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Kemp, it's been a pleasure to work with you. You've done a tremendous job for our utilities department. Uh, I've been on the board three years, but I've seen a lot of a significant amount of uh, improvements to our water and sewer system, and electric system, uh, grid, and new substation uh, have, have always been a forward-thinking person, and um, it's, uh, we'll miss you, at, uh, but uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you, and uh, congratulations on your upcoming retirement. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kemp, I'm going to be very brief. I do uh, want to say very briefly that you have um, provided continuous, exceptional, and distinguished uh, service uh, leadership and outstanding professionalism. Uh, we're going to really miss you. Um, you um, have done great things for our utility department and for the city of Starkville. Mayor, I have uh, worked very close with Mr. Kemp, and, and he has done just a very remarkable job. And Ms. Kemp, I wish you a great success in your endeavors, and thank you for um, the time you spent with the city of Starkville. Thank you. Alderman Vaughn. <laughs> Mr. Kemp, uh, I don't know where to start at, but I can start, I can start with one thing. You always said, have a plan, work the plan, you'll get there. We got a lot of places. We've grown a lot up under your leadership. Plans that you had five, six years down the road, they all here, they all plan. Brand new lagoon. You didn't tell us about the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the service that we got you. Can you get a, uh, a plat or something for the lagoon? Let's see, and, then, and our substation is out so far in front of us and our infrastructure water and sewage, you got us so far out front of the municipalities. But that became because you said, have a plan, work the plan. You saw this way down the road when you and I used to talk. I didn't see the plan, but I followed your leadership and we got to the plan. I learned the plan, I understand the plan. You got us so far out front of a lot of municipalities that probably won't never reach where we are. And I can't do nothing but say thank you very much and complaints that we used to get from 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 the employee, from from the citizen, all oh, that just almost just went away. So your leadership was a great, tremendous to Starville, and you got us where we need to be. And I really thank you so much. Thank you, Alderman. All right. The next item is uh, citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment to the to the city, to the alderman. Uh, you have three minutes, and you have any topic that you would like. Um, we do have a timed amount, so um, we do not engage back and forth, but we are here to listen. So, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? 
Anyone else wishing to speak on a matter? Good evening, Madam Mayor, Board of Aldermen. How are y'all doing? My name is Rosa DeLamba. I am a business owner on Main Street. I am also the Main Street president. Um, I'm gonna keep this very brief, because I'm sure y'all have a long night. Um, I am here, as you received the letter to increase the four hour parking, my signature was on that. However, after uh, submitting the letter, we've learned that there's a number of businesses who um, feel that there needs to be further review to this before we make such a major change on the side streets. So I am recommending that um, this be tabled until further review and research is done to ensure that this is going to benefit all business sectors on Main Street and around Main Street. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Long. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak to this matter? Or any other matter, I'm sorry. Any, any, any. Ah, so the Mayor's Youth Council is going to come forward. Outstanding. Okay, so now you got to tell who everybody is. Everybody gets to tell their name. Okay, go ahead. Hi, my name is Benson Lee. Okay. I'm Destiny Gordon. I'm Padir Ford. And I'm Dryla. Okay. And um, we are part of the Mayor's Council. I serve as the Sergeant at Arms. I serve as the Mayor. Speak up. I'm a member. You're just a member. No, not just a member. You're a member. Okay. And I'm also a member. Okay. Great. We would just like to give our thanks to y'all for like all the hard work you do for the city. Because I know when like times like this, it's just hard to like get stuff done around town. But we would just like to thank all of you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming out. We appreciate thank you. All right. Um, there's also a recommendation. You have a recommendation. Okay. okay, so I run track, like, and we don't have an indoor track center in Mississippi, and we have to travel all the way to, like, Alabama, Louisiana, Florida, and stuff like that. So I am recommending an indoor track. Um, okay, well, thank you. We'll take that under advisement. Okay. Thank, thank you. Right. Thank you. Have a good thank evening. You. Anyone else under citizens' comments? Anyone else? All right, I'm going to close it as citizens' comments. Uh, our next item is public appearances. We have uh, Scott and Anna Dodd from Country Club Estates who want to make a 10-minute presentation. It will be timed, but you may come right on up and, and make your presentation. And we don't normally do engaging, so it'll just be a one-way flow of information. And Ms. Uh, Harden there has the, has the clock, so. Thank you. So this is the second time we've came and did a presentation to the board. My wife came 2019 and it's related to Country Club Estates, specifically related to the fact that it's a public safety and health hazard. As I stated in an email to Mr. Latimer, Ms. Spruill, and Mr. Kemp back in 2019, and as well as we showed a picture with a fire truck during one of the events, we've had 20, 21, 22 events, three of which got in our home. This isn't about the home. This is about public health, safety, and welfare. Continued development in phase three. After my wife gave that presentation, and we butted twice, we did ask this board, and the board did send a pump truck out to our intersection and we appreciated that. I think it may have been sent to a few other uh, drains. And I asked a question via email at that time about what the schedule was for these pump trucks to come. I didn't get a response, and we haven't seen the pump truck, pump truck come back. But I think we know that that pump truck is just a small fix, not a real fix. So uh, the biggest concern is the fact that development has been allowed to continue in this subdivision. In phase three right now, from what I understand, the board has soon will have an opportunity to approve or disapprove of the last portion of construction of phase three. 
previous, our previous alderman, I've met with Jeffrey a couple of times. David Little sat on the record. He's been in the neighborhood. He was one of the first people in the neighborhood that there's been a flooding issue in that neighborhood, drainage issues since development. And that was 2005, 2006 with phase one. And nothing has been done. There are three choke points in this neighborhood that are the three roads that traverse from the front to the back, from phase one, phase two, to phase three. They're the only three ways that you can get out. And those three choke points, when we're at flood stage, flood. We're not talking about a small flood. We're talking about four and a half, five feet of water in the road. And yet there's continued development. A lot of the homeowners, potential homeowners going into phase three are first time homeowners getting loans with no knowledge whatsoever that there is this problem in this neighborhood. So what I would ask of the board is to one, not approve phase three, continued development, and two, to stop continued development and work with the developer, the engineers that originally designed it, potentially other engineers, one of the best engineering schools in the South for sure, if not the nation, and Mississippi State, there is a way to fix this problem, to alleviate some of this water. There's continued development north of this subdivision that will increase the amount of water that's already flowing into it. So I would ask you to vote no for continued development until this can be fixed. That's what I would ask you to do. And then also, the ARPA funds that are earmarked from what I understand for sewage and drainage, water, and the matching portion that the state will be handing out, provided the monies are allocated in the right manner. And I, obviously we've been here, well, we've been in Starkville, back in Starkville since 2008. So we know that there are other areas, as you, I'm sure the board knows, in the city of Starkville that have infrastructures, probably in each of your wards, water, sewage, drainage, we would ask that those that you use consideration for those funds to be used for what they are supposed to be used for, for sewage and drainage, for infrastructure. I think that's all, unless you guys have questions. Yes. One or two. First of all, I'm not your alderman, I don't know that, but the worst I saw, was I think one time we might have just got some construction debris that I know it was those, probably those pictures. Have y'all, like a day like today, is it still, is it coming up this much? It's still, okay. It's, it's bad. I mean, the, the other thing that, and I do appreciate what the city did to hire after Anna gave, uh, talked, you know, gave that presentation to the board previously. They did hire a hydrologist, Jill Butler, to do phase three, and she's, one of the leading hydrologists, civil engineers on hydrology in the state. And she made recommendations for phase three only because that was what she was hired for, for certain corrections to be done back there. And they have not been done. To, from, from my, looking at what she recommended, from my viewpoint, practically zero of those have been done. And there are three, three detention one detention ditch and then two detention ponds slash ditches. Uh, they, the, the one that's directly behind Royal Dream, yes, it floods about pretty much every time and floods right on the, the road. Uh, and she also stated that based on the design of those three, that if one fails, all three will fail because it's a domino effect. Uh, so, I don't understand the, how this can be allowed. And it's not, this is not Stark Vegas. Not when this kind of stuff goes on. And this isn't for me, 
or for Anna. This is for the city of Starkville. And I know the city of Starkville has, in a lot of your wards, there are areas that need correction from a sewage, from a drainage, from a, you know, aging, main you know, water main standpoint. Please do what you can to correct that. I understand you have limitations. I don't know all those limitations. I don't sit in your seat. But you can do something, particularly with these ARPA funds. Something can be used. Those can be used for what they're intended to be used for. And that's what we would ask. Stop construction until this can be corrected. And use those funds. Work with the developer and engineers to get something done that correct this because you have people that have no idea people at mississippi state in high positions coming from out of state buying through a realtor having in some cases never seen the home never talked to any of the neighbors they have no idea and then they come to us because they find out we're the worst off and they ask us how can this happen thank you mr miss Scott. thank you thank you so much all right, next item on the agenda, we have two public hearings. The first one is the third public hearing in consideration of the amendments to the Unified Development Code with UDC signs. Mr. Avery, Mr. Hall, Mr. Haviland has taken the week off and, and it is spring break, so yes, we're having a light week. <laughs> Mr. Avery, do you uh, give us just a brief? I can. So this is for the third public hearing and consideration of the amendments to the Unified Development Code specific to signs. Uh, and specifically UDC section number 14.7.5, uh, clarification of code enforcement process following amortization of non-conforming signs. So basically uh, setting an enforcement process and also offering incentives for compliance within a 30-day window for those um, uh, property owners with a sign to, uh, in, in the process of taking that sign down and waiving any permitting fees for the, in that 30-day window for those specific locations. And Attorney Latimer, if there's anything you'd like to add. No, to there's no, no changes between the second and third public hearing. Right. And I will note that this was noticed in the Starville Daily News on February 25th of 2022. Okay, thank you. And May 5th is the date, just in case anybody doesn't remember. So thank you, sir. <coughs> Any questions of Mr. Avery before I call for public hearing? Okay. All right. I will open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter? This is the sign ordinance, which is up for a third public hearing. Anyone wish you to speak either for or against? Now is the opportunity. Either for or against. Seeing none, I will call. Oh, Mr. Turner, were you getting up? Uh, my name is Aaron Turner. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, two quick questions that probably go to mind when I was getting real with this. Uh, be a threat to churches and, and, and buildings like the uh, Coda House uh, in the federal business. I did just for the uh, uh, business. I want to, that's Mr. Cool. Avery, would you like to answer that question since it's there? Yes, sir, Mr. Stern. This does apply to any pole sign in the city of Starkville, uh, municipal properties included. Anyone else wishing to speak to this matter? All right, seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing. And this gives us an opportunity for consideration of this, of this matter. We have taken it up a number of times. So do I have a motion to approve the uh, amendments to the Unified Development Code signs? A motion from Alderman Beatty. Do I have a second? Second from Alderman Brooks. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay, that is uh, by a vote of six to one. Motion carries. All right, thank you. The next one is a public hearing in consideration under Mississippi Code annotated 21-1911 to determine whether the building located at 200 Curtis with the parcel number 102C-00-147.00 is a menace to public health, safety, and welfare of the community. Mr. McMullen and Ms. Childs will be, um, oh, and the chief, I'm sorry, didn't mean to leave you out back there, chief, uh, will be handling this presentation. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Board of Aldermen. I'm Officer Giles. I work with the Police Department. And today I'm presenting to you the 200 property of 200 Curtis. 
under the 21-1911 code to determine that property or parcel is a ministry public health, safety, and welfare. So this right here is the tax information document, and right here you'll see at the bottom of it, it says 200 Curtis, and not 200 Curtis Circle. I noticed that was kind of like an issue at the beginning of it, but we're just going by the tax information that's stated on here. And the property owner is Miss Mary Ann Miles that lives at 203 Curtis. This right here is the violation letters and the notice. First violation letter was issued on December 16th, 2021. Uh, certified mail was sent to the property owner on February 23rd, 2022, informing them of the public hearing that's happening today. This right here is the first notice of violation letter. This is just a copy of it. It was issued on December 16th um, in 2021. Uh, again, Ms. Miles, Ms. Miles resides at 203. This right here is just a copy of the certified mail and the dilapidated structure notice here. Uh, that's just a copy of it, pretty much. This right here is uh, photos of where we posted in the dilapidated structures. On the one on the left is at the property itself at 200, the one we're talking about today. On the one on the right is where it's at City Hall. This right here is the photos of the actual property that's in violation. The one on the right is an overview, pretty much, of just the whole property. On the front here on the left is, uh, you can see here that there's no railing on the front of it, and the wood is uh, coming up off at the front, you can see by the door. Here, you got the east side of the house. There's pretty much, you have rotten wood going down the side of it on the exterior wall. The steps are also pretty much rotten not good for anyone to step on. Uh, if you look at the right on the west side of the house, um, you can see the same thing pretty much is over there too. Rotten wood on that one as well. And I went to the uh, house to verify the stuff that she's discussed. I found that the support post was removed on the porch right on the uh, porch roof to get for us we can make follow in time. And decking is missing, bows, rotten, anybody can walk on it and follow through it. Steps and handrails are inadequate. They're rotten and missing and very shaky. And support pillars for the floor and support around the house. The uh, mortar is uh, decaying and is showing signs of uh, lack of maintenance. The exterior sheeting is rotten all the way around the house, allowing for uh, moisture and rodents and insects to enter the residence. Foundation shows signs of deterioration and neglect, which is causing the, the structure to sag and actually lean. Roofing shows signs of uh, deterioration and neglect. Based on the 2021 International Property Maintenance Code, Section 111, this building is considered unsafe. It is also uh, unfit for human occupancy and is a, considered a dangerous structure or Prince. My pictures are somewhat similar to hers. They have tried to fix the front by putting tin over it. As in that picture, you can see where the uh, support post is missing. The picture to the right is showing all the rotten uh, exterior sheathing, which is allowing rodents and insects and moisture to enter the structure. The roof, rusty um, nails are popping back, pulling out allow water and moisture getting in. The uh, steps are obviously inadequate for uh, a residence. And then the last picture is again showing the sheeting on the west side. And you can see a, right, a little bit that the uh, house is leaning to the uh, west in that picture. And that covers. Mr. McLaurin, were you able to get inside the house? No, ma'am. Did you? Were you able to peek inside the house? I could not reach the uh, windows, but I was afraid to. I was not going to get on the deck. Okay. So, it's, so it's so it is. Is there any element of it that this doesn't sound like it's salvageable in terms of the the piers or the posts and the interior? It all looks like it's, they're not even studs or. It's there's there's the foundation of the property where the pillars that it sits on hmm. they're rotting out the skulls and or the the mortars. Thing, which is causing the house to sag and to lean to the west. And uh, that's the biggest issue. And 
with the exterior looking like it is on the sheathing, the uh, seal plate around the bottom is probably rotten out, which would be a very substantial issue with that structure. Okay, so a strong wind might do it. Any questions before I open it up as a public hearing? None? All right, let me open it up as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter? I believe we have someone on the phone. They're not on the phone. Okay, we did have someone who contacted us about being on the phone uh, about this. So we have no one, anyone else in the audience wishing to speak to this matter? Anyone wishing to speak to this matter? Seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing. And um, anything else you wish to add, or Mr. Latimer, from your perspective, anything? We've covered all the necessary bases? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, uh, do I have a motion for consideration of this building as a menace to public health? Move approval. I have a motion from Alderman Carver. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Ruff. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. It is unanimous. Uh, Chief, if I may ask, have you looked at that to see if it is something that is uh, can be burned? Okay. All right. It just sounds as though this one's about to fall in, so it, I, I worry about that. But okay. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Next item on the agenda is consideration of the adoption of a cemetery and burial policy for the city of Starkville. Um, this is one of those that uh, I am bringing forward because uh, one of the kind of unknown things that the city does is to um, try to manage in several ways the cemeteries that are our responsibility. Um, we have Odd Fellows on 182 in MLK, and we have Odd Fellows on University, and then we have taken uh, responsibility and somewhat ownership by default of uh, Rush Arbor, which is on University. And so we have, um, we have been keeping up the landscaping, and occasionally we have questions and, and um, desires to purchase deeds. We consider that the, the, uh, both the graveyards are full and so there are opportunities on occasion that thank you I'm sorry that um, someone wishes to sell a deed or that there is a, a plot that appears to be uh, unused and has no no one who claims it and so um, there is state statute that deals with it but we haven't done anything from policy standpoint so it, I felt like it was appropriate that we establish some sort of policy for us to um, go by so that we would not be traveling on a ad hoc basis each and every time we had a request. So um, that's the purpose of this policy. Does anyone have any questions about it of me? Anything in particular that you'd like to inquire about? Okay, I would obviously suggest uh, Mr. Latimer has vetted it um, and it follows state statute so we're not in violation of that. So I would I would ask that the board consider adopting this policy so that Move we can. Thank you, Alderman Vaughn. I have a motion from Alderman Vaughn. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Sistronk, I heard. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, and do I have do I have a motion to perhaps table this item under board business at the request? Alderman Rupp? So moved. All right. I have a motion to table item A under board business 10 by Alderman Rupp. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second from Alderman Brooks. Mayor, Ms. Mayor, do we have, or we don't have time for discussion of this to try to determine talking about the, the, the parking thing? Yeah, well, they've asked us to, to I mean, Ms. DeLomba asked, who sent us the letter originally, right. has asked us to table it, and if they're going to go back and look at it, they may come back with a different proposal. Could we, could we be working on something that might be a proposal or something that we could work with them on as far as the proposal? Well, I think I mean, Alderman Rupp's in the position to work with them on that. So I think as a part of the Main Street Board that, that he is working with them through that. Am I correct about that, Alderman Rupp? Well, yes, I've maintained all along that as the city's representative on that board that I want to reflect their wishes since they're on the front lines of this. So I would not be for doing anything that did not, did not include them in the decisions and recommendations. But as that comes to us, can we, because it's a policy decision on the part of the city of Starkville, I think the board should be involved in the input of that policy decision as, as to how we do it. If we make any significant changes in downtown parking, will we have time to for discussion of that. Does that need to be discussed tonight or we discuss it in the morning? I would suggest we don't discuss it tonight and that's only because if, if they're not going to, if they don't know what they want to do yet, that, that, that we not discuss something that we don't even know is going to Once they come back with a proposal, would we have a Friday meeting Certainly. or something to take that up and look at it and see how it's 
I'd like to develop all roads. Yeah, okay? I, I would think that this board has the final say in any parking decision. I would like to, just from a process standpoint and out of respect to the fact that I think that they are in the front lines of this, I'd like their recommendations to be a starting point for our determination and deliberation on ultimate policy. You sound good, man. All right, thank you. So I have a motion to second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It is unanimous. And we have a claim stocket, and approved. I think that takes us to the end. Did I hear a motion for approval? Alderman Carver? And do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Sistron. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion carries five to three. Thank you so much. That brings us to... I'm sorry? Five two. Did what did I say? Five, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Five two. I apologize. Um, that brings us to um, a need for a closed determination session. Do I have a motion to go into closed determination session to determine the need so for executive moved. session? A motion from Alderman Vaughn. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Rupp. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. If you would please clear the room, we're going to go into.
language in accordance with the notice required excuse me under mississippi code annotate 254113 the board will be having a work session Public and media are invited to attend. Notice should be provided of this work session within one hour of this meeting by posting such notice to City Hall. The notice should be made a part of the minutes of the board meeting and the work session will be open. Public meeting of the City of Starkville and the public and press are invited to attend. I also might remind y'all that this is a five week month. So we will have another two weeks before we meet again. So no. um, do I, <laughs> do I an absent a special session for some reason. Uh, do I have a motion to, ad to adjourn? Move approval. I have a motion to adjourn from Alderman Vaughn. Do I have a second? I was going to say, come on, y'all. No, 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 you do. Alderman Brooks, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? We are in adjournment. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day.